Welcome to Three Minute Thursdays. Three Minute Thursdays are a short breakdown of topics that you will see within your flight training here at UND. The goal is for you, the student, to have a better understanding of what it takes to become a safe, professional pilot. Hello, my name is Zach Dabrowski and I'm a lead flight instructor for UND Aerospace. In this first video of our Do Not Neglect the Wind series, we will be discussing the VFR departure procedure at Grand Forks. Referencing the UND Safety Policies and Procedures Section 7, we can see what the VFR standard departure procedure is for each runway at Grand Forks. The procedure is fairly simple. We start by flying the extended runway center line to 2,500 feet MSL, followed by a 30 degree heading change away from the airport. Continue your climb to 3,500 feet MSL, then you can proceed on course. Let's break this down a bit more. First off, it is crucial to track the runway center line on departure. This means paying attention to the wind direction and adjusting your heading to maintain the extended center line. A helpful tip is to pick a reference outside, such as a road off to the side of your desired track, and maintain the same distance from it. This is important to avoid the potential helicopter traffic between the parallel runways at Grand Forks as well as other aircraft in the traffic pattern. Next, we need to make a 30 degree turn away from the airport at 2500 feet MSL. This is for traffic avoidance for the following scenarios. One common scenario is traffic may be on an extended upwind that is staying in the traffic pattern and will pass well below you when they turn crosswind or are on downwind. Our next scenario is when fixed wing traffic is entering the Grand Forks traffic pattern. They will be arriving at either 2,100 feet MSL from the northern reporting points or 2,500 transitioning to 2,100 feet MSL from the southern reporting points. The final scenario is that UND helicopter traffic may be operating up to 2,500 feet MSL just outside of the Grand Forks Delta. When they're in their designated practice areas, the helicopters may not be talking to Grand Forks approach. All three of these scenarios require pilots to be aware of where other traffic is. In order to make this easier, all aircraft should be correcting for the wind to be in the expected location to make it easier for others to visually see and avoid traffic. For example, if the aircraft in the upwind is not tracking the runway center line, it can make it harder for others to find and cause a potential near miss. Lastly, waiting to proceed on course when reaching 3,500 feet MSL is due to the Delta airspace ceilings for both Grand Forks International and the Grand Forks Air Force Base. This allows you to transition over the top of the Delta airspace at 3,500 feet or continue your climb to your designated cruise altitude. While this procedure works very well to efficiently get traffic out of the Grand Forks Delta airspace, there are a couple key scenarios to pay attention to, especially when dealing with winds aloft out of the east or west. Specifically referring to departing either runway 35 left or 17 right and planning to go to a practice area that is in the opposite direction. For example, if you depart runway 17 right and are planning to go to practice area Mike. The first common thing we see is requesting a transition through the TFR at the airbase when it's not necessary, such as when going to practice area India or Mike. This is completely avoidable and is extra radio congestion that is not needed. The TFR can be avoided very easily by paying attention to the wind and selecting a heading that will allow you to track to the north or south just outside the TFR. While many students will request transition through the TFR just in case, we should be doing our part as PIC and ensuring that we are avoiding the TFR unless it is needed, such as going to practice areas that are more directly west of Grand Forks. Another area that we can improve on is when you reach 3,500 feet MSL and turn on course to the north, do not just turn to a heading of 360. If you neglect the winds, you can easily be pushed into the approach corridor for runway 17 right with winds aloft out of the west. Remember, on a busy day, there may be several aircraft, including some commercial traffic, on an extended final doing an approach into Grand Forks. This can and has created near misses and other in-flight hazards. The fix is simple. Do not neglect the wind and track to a reference point in the distance that will avoid the approach corridor completely. Today, we reviewed the UND VMC departure procedure and why it's important to pay attention to the winds aloft. 
from tracking an extended center line for traffic avoidance to avoiding the TFR and staying clear of the approach corridor, it is imperative that we do not neglect the wind. Fly safe and we'll see you on the flight line. Thank you for watching 3 Minute Thursdays. If you have a topic that you would like to see covered, please comment below. While this procedure works very well to efficiently get traffic out of the Grand Forks airspace delta, <laughs> Sounds like one of those like space movies or something. Delta Force. Delta Force.